Are you digging up the dirt on your dead? Want to find out how? Hear the latest on new family history sources and websites with interesting and fun guests and experts. Find out what other people have been learning about their ancestors. From kings to thieves, inventors to farmers, nothing that's been discovered should surprise us anymore, but it always does. Find out what we mean. Great family history stories and information are on the way now with Extreme Genes, Family History Radio, and ExtremeGenes.com. It's been this way for generations. Dates in the Bible don't quite match the marriage certificate. Okay, I'm getting a little paranoid now every time I crack a mic ever since uh, somebody I met at the Roots Tech Family History Convention in Salt Lake City told me she thought I would be much older and much heavier because I have a a, a so-called radio voice, whatever that means. Hey, Genies, good to have you back to Extreme Genes Family History Radio, America's family history show. My name is Fisher, without the C, your radio root sleuth where we shake your family tree and watch the nuts fall out. I hope you've had a productive week on the trail. There is a new effort underway to fund the digitizing of gazillions of War of 1812 pension records. You know, it's their 200th anniversary going on right now. The originals at the digital archives are being worn out from use and deteriorating. So the Federation of Genealogical Societies, the National Archives, Fold 3, Ancestry, they're all raising and matching donations to make them digital and then free for all of us to use. Well, some of those records are already starting to make their way out. And I learned about a third great grandfather this past week who was in that war. So now I'm just waiting for the full record to find out just what his story was. It's always exciting and interesting. And by the way, you can learn about this project at preservethepensions.org. Hey, we have a couple of great guests today, as always. First up in about seven minutes will be Lindsay Fulton. She is a genealogist for the New England Historic and Genealogical Society in Boston. Lindsay has put together an awesome summary on two two two-sided plastic-covered pages about applying to lineage or genealogical societies. And if you've been with the show for a while, you know there are a bunch of them out there. I mean hundreds. But Lindsay pretty much covers the big ones, the daughters and sons of the American Revolution, the Society of Mayflower Descendants, and several more. We'll talk to her about many of the common reasons for joining and some pretty interesting rules to follow during the application process that just may save you a lot of time and pain. I wish I had seen this before I joined the two organizations that I'm now in. Then later in the show, it's another ordinary person finding extraordinary things. We'll talk to a woman who only started her family history journey a short time ago and has already logged some incredible experiences you'll want to hear about. And here's a hint. She got help in part of her research from a Scottish monk, a living one, honest. (laughs) And, of course, Tom Perry, our Preservation Authority, will be back with more tips on making sure your family records are still around for your grandchildren and great-grandchildren to enjoy. By the way, at Roots Tech and on our Facebook page, it has been so pleasing to get so many great reviews on our free podcast app. If you've missed past shows, there is no easier way to find and listen to them. Just go to the store of your iPhone or Android and type in Extreme Genes, hit download, and you're in business. For nothing. You're welcome. It is time once again for your family histoire news from the pages of ExtremeGenes.com. And we start with the story of a Virginia grandmother. They call her Granny Color. Now, she's still as spunky as she was as a teen, which, by the way, was back in the 1920s. Yes, she is 106 years old, still very energetic and loving life. She writes and sews and plays music. She's a mother of six. And this is the part that gets me. She has never eaten eggs and hates vegetables. She keeps Reese's peanut butter cups next to her bed, and she drinks Pepsi every day. Maybe my soda habit isn't quite so bad. 
I wonder if she says this is the 77th anniversary of her 29th birthday. Hey, if World War II is in your family's history, you might be interested in owning some of Winston Churchill's blood. Back in 1962, he fractured his hip and recovered at Middlesex Hospital in London. A nurse named Patricia Fitzgibbon took the sample and wanted to keep the vial with Churchill's name on it. Her superiors, for some reason, said, sure. So she kept it for the rest of her life. Now she has passed and the blood will soon be up for auction. You got to wonder what this will go for. Carmen Nigro has written on the New York Public Library blog 20 reasons why you should write your family history. Her emphasis, by the way, as it should be, is on the stories. Carmen talks about it being therapeutic, the impact it will have on future generations, how your family will be solidified, how you'll meet distant cousins. In fact, if I read it all for you, you you won't read it for yourself. So go through the whole thing at ExtremeGenes.com. And finally, if you're into Danish research, Denmark has just opened up their largest digital archive yet with some material dating back to the 1600s. Just go to archive.dk, that's A-R-K-I-V dot D-K. And speaking of which, MyHeritage.com has just released the 1930 Danish census fully digitized. That's it. And coming up in three minutes, have you ever thought of joining a lineage society? Lindsay Fulton, a genealogist at the New England Historic and Genealogical Society, has some great tips to make the challenge of applying a little easier. That's next on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Genies, not long ago, something happened with one particular online research service that changed everything. It happened with a service that already has 75 million members worldwide, and it's not who you think it is. Hi, it's Fisher, and you know I'm always looking for new and better ways for you to discover your ancestors, not just the data, but the stories. The online service I'm talking about takes your family tree and then uses its powerful automated technology to match the people in your tree to over 5 billion records from around the world. Censuses, newspaper stories, vital records with 97% accuracy. This means no more wading through thousands of useless so-called hints. This also means the site itself is constantly looking for matches for you even while you're sleeping. What site does all this? It's MyHeritage.com. You can try MyHeritage.com for free. Here's a special gift from me. Use discount code ExtremeGenes after signing up and get an exclusive 20% discount at MyHeritage.com. How's your family history research going? Are you stuck on a difficult line? Don't know how to start? Let the professionals at Heritage Consulting Genealogy Research Services help. Heritage Consulting has been providing professional research and consultation services since 1978. They can help you find your own personal family history for far less than you would expect by researching, collecting, analyzing, and interpreting the numerous historical documents your ancestors left in their lifetimes. They'll then provide you with a professionally written report in book or electronic form that you and your family can enjoy for literally generations. Knowledge of your ancestors forges stronger ties within your family and helps children better appreciate who they are within the context of your family history. Call Heritage Consulting Genealogy Research Services right now. The call is free. Dial 1-877-537-2000. That's 1-877-537-2000. You'll speak directly to an expert genealogist. Find out more at Heritage Consulting. Consulting.com. While we all love diving into the deep end of our gene pool, don't forget about capturing the histories of those who are still with us. Go to StoryWorth.com to start your family's story today. Each week, StoryWorth.com will email a question to people whose stories you wish to preserve. Questions like, tell us about the day you got engaged, or what do you remember about your grandmother? All they have to do is reply with a story, either by email or by telephone. That story is then forwarded to the family and securely stored in a private online storybook. It doesn't get any simpler. You can enroll up to six storytellers for, get this, just $49 a year. You'll get a free one-month trial. And for a limited time, Extreme Genes listeners get an additional 10% discount at StoryWorth.com slash Extreme Genes. That's StoryWorth.com slash Extreme Genes. Is your family story worth 13 cents a day? Sign up now at StoryWorth.com slash Extreme Genes. Simple, secure, effective. Your story is worth telling.
And welcome back to Extreme Genes, America's family history show. I am Fisher, your radio root sleuth. And as I've mentioned the last couple of weeks, now that Roots Tech is done, you're going to benefit from some of the people uh, that I got to talk to there, experts in so many areas. And one of those people is on the phone with me right now from the New England Historic Genealogical Society, Lindsay Fulton. She's a genealogist there. Hi, Lindsay. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. And Lindsay uh, put together one of those portable genealogist, uh, I, I guess the best way to describe it, Lindsay, is it's a, a plastic piece that gives you the bullet points of certain concepts you need to understand. And would that be an accurate assessment? Yes. And just as the title says, we wanted it to be portable. Uh, so we wanted it to be able to go with you as you're doing your research and not having to go back and double check a requirement that may be needed. Uh, it's just easier to be able to, to hold it right with you. Right. And I see ingeniously you put three holes in it. I wonder what those could be for. Never mind. So this particular piece was about how to join certain societies, genealogical societies. And uh, there are a whole bunch of them on here, and I know for a fact there are hundreds of them out there. We actually did a quiz one day, Lindsay, on the show with a couple of other guests and said, all right, which ones of these are real and which ones did I make up? And they didn't get a single one right. So there's some... (laughs) There's some very funny names out there for these uh, various uh, genealogical societies. Have you belonged to any of them, by the way? Uh, I am in the midst of applying to Daughters of the American Revolution. Okay. And I have joined the SAR and the Mayflower Society. And it is quite a process to go through these things. And I think we all have different reasons for doing it. Some people do it for the, the social side of it. In my case, I felt like I wanted independent eyes to verify and validate my research. Simple enough, right? Yes, and those are the main two reasons why I've found that patrons like to apply to these societies, especially some of the harder societies to get into because they do go over it with a fine tooth comb. They'll double check, triple check the work that you've done. They tend to be a little bit more difficult in what they consider to be proof of lineage. So a lot of times genealogists will use published resources, published genealogies, published histories, things of that nature, to prove their family trees. And societies like DAR, SAR, Mayflower, are very particular about what they consider to be proof. Uh, They like to have original source documentation for pretty much everything that's uh, included on your application. Absolutely. If if they approve it, then, then you're good to go. All right, so let's go through a couple of these organizations here and what the differences are between them and what you need to do to apply. And that's the point of your handout here, which I think is just really helpful for people. The Baronial Order of Magna Carta. I didn't even know we had... Is that here in America? Yes, it is. Okay. And you say here that you have to be invited to join. Yeah, yeah. Well, the definition of invitation is lenient in some cases and not so in others. Okay. Okay. Uh, In some cases, an invitation is just you telling the society that you would like to belong to their society, and then they send you an application. That is their invitation. Okay. Uh, In in other cases, it's a formal invitation. You need to find someone that's already a member in that society, and then you need to be invited by that particular member. Colonial dames is that way. Wow, it sounds like college, doesn't it? Fraternities, (laughs) sororities. (laughs) Yes. Um, I don't believe that the baronial order of Magna Carta is that specific. I think you just need to show that you have interest in that society, and then they invite you based on your interest level. They usually have you fill out what most of them call like a preliminary application where you just outline very quickly your line of descent, so from you, your parents, your grandparents, all the way to that ancestor who's eligible, whatever that service may be. Right. In this case, it would be one of the 25 Surtees who signed the Magna Carta or one of the five counselors of uh, King John. Most societies actually ask for that preliminary lineage, but to go back to the 1200s, <laughs> you basically have to plug into uh, some of the proven lines, wouldn't you? In this case, yes. Most of those older societies, you're correct. Yeah, the Baronial Order is one of them. There is a society called, and I'm going to probably not get the title specifically correct, but it's the Illegitimate Sons and Daughters of the Kings of England. Or, ah. And it's it's lovingly called the Bastard Society. Okay. And everyone wants to belong to that society, and it's very, very difficult to get in. They are very specific on what they consider to be an accurate line. A lot of the resources that they, they need those to be original. They'll only take references from two books, 
and one of them is the Complete Peerage book. Right, Burke's Peerage? Yes, and the other one I'm forgetting right now. But those are the only two that they'll take that are published. So you have to plug into that, kind of like with the Mayflower Society, they have the, the first five generations. Right, exactly, exactly. But And then after that point, you're on your own. I mean, you have to, and, and that's really old. I mean, th- that's probably 20, 22 generations that you're going back to. Unbelievable. So, <laughs> yeah, that is a difficult society to get into. Yeah. Um, but most of the older ones will allow you to use the, the published material that's out there. So what is the, the hardest of all the societies to actually get into, would you say, Lindsay? Oh, boy. Mayflower is difficult. They tend to be very specific on what they want as proof. Same with the Daughters of the American Revolution. They have become, over the past 20 or 30 years or so, have become very specific about what they want for documentation. Now, going or, back on them, because they're, they're so big, back in the old days, I mean, in the 30s and the 40s, they weren't so yeah. particular. And, and no, yet, they were not. still today, anybody can plug in through those bad lines, can they not? If they're going to plug in through a bad line, they need to reprove the entire line. So if you find, for example, in one of the older lineage books, the DAR lineage books, if you find a line in there that you would connect to, most of the time you're going to need to reprove that line. Okay. Because they were so lax, for lack of a better word, in the 20s and 30s uh, with what they needed for documentation. So even though the Patriot has already technically been proven, you need to redo all of that research. Interesting. I did not know that. I would imagine that it's the same for the SAR because they work so closely together. Yes. Yeah. For the most part, anything that was approved before, I believe it's 1980-ish, is when they need to start redoing your lineage. All right. We're talking to Lindsay Fulton. She's a genealogist with the New England Historic Genealogical Society in Boston. And Lindsay did a great handout that she was making available at Roots Tech. On the back of it, Lindsay, you have a list of do's and don'ts. I think they're very good. Uh, One that really caught my eye that was interesting because I had that same experience was you mentioned in here that we need to include other spouses with these people. And I'd always wondered why they were bothering me with other spouses that weren't in the line of descent for Mayflower Society or SAR. And uh, you kind of explain that right here. Why don't you tell us what that's about? So proving a second spouse or third spouse, even if they're not in the line, is important mainly to prove to the genealogist that's reading your report that the person you're talking about is that same person. So for example, uh, John Brown marries Sarah Young, and Sarah Young and John Brown are your line. Right. If Sarah dies and then John remarries a Rebecca, when he dies, it may say on his death record that his wife's name is Rebecca. And then the genealogist will wonder why you're claiming that Sarah Young is his wife. Right. So now you're explaining that the reason that there's an additional person named on the death record, or if you were using something else, for example, a land record that might name a spouse's name, then you'd at least explain to the genealogist why that's occurring. Okay. Here's another one of your do's and don'ts, and I like this one. Don't include original records. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or photocopies that cut off information. Now, the original records thing, that's kind of obvious. You don't want to send those off. You always want to do a photocopy. But I was a little interested when they asked me to include a photo of an entire page where my person's entry was very tiny. And they were obviously just trying to make sure that I wasn't cheating and, you know, putting in something from a different document that didn't have to do with what we were trying to prove. Right. They want to make the provenance of what you're showing, they want to make sure that it makes sense for the entire document. So a census record, for example, they want to see the whole census record. Uh, if you're cutting out a obituary from a newspaper, they want to see the entire page of the newspaper, and then you can blow up that obituary, if it's a tiny part of that, so that they can see the date of the newspaper. Uh, and then it will also include the name of the newspaper and then the location on the top there. So they like to have all of that information included. Uh, same thing actually goes for tombstones. If you're showing a picture of a tombstone, which they will take as proof of death, if you're showing that, they like to see other tombstones that are in the area because that will give them a good gauge of when that tombstone was put up. And also they want it to match tombstones that are in the area. Right. Because then they know that all of that jibes with the historical context and that most likely that was the original tombstone. What you're saying is these organizations do not allow for any cheating whatsoever. No. (laughs) (laughs) They frown upon that. Now, 
How about DNA? Where is that coming into play now? You've got a lot of organizations out there. We've mentioned probably the big three here, Mayflower, D-A-R, S-A-R. Where are they all coming in now when it comes to DNA proof of ancestry? Well, you cannot use DNA to prove ancestry on its own. There have been several cases where Mayflower and DAR have used DNA as proof and included with an original source. The short answer is you probably cannot use it. The long answer is if you're trying to prove a line that has been either questioned or they're trying to extend it a little bit further, this is more the case with Mayflower, then it's possible that they may look at that as what would be considered, I guess, secondary evidence, even though it's not really secondary evidence. Would this be part of a surname project then? Typically, yeah. I've only known of one time that Mayflower has accepted DNA as proof in addition to other documents. I would rather say that they will not take it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> than, than say that then that would help you in any way. I mean, it would be almost like using a published history or a published genealogy as supplemental proof of something that you've already proven through original source documents. Gotcha. So it's a supplemental thing. Got it. Yeah. All right. Well, this portable genealogist handout is about applying the lineage societies written by Lindsay Fulton, our guest from NEHGS. She's a genealogist there. Covers popular hereditary societies, uh, the application process, locating vital records, your do's and don'ts. It's only like four pages. And Lindsay, it's very complete and you did a great job with it. Where can people get this? Uh, They can get that on our website, which is AmericanAncestors.org. They can order it there. We have 15 in the collection now, so you could get all of those at our website. Uh, We also sell them with a binder if you wanted to buy all of them together. That would be available, again, at AmericanAncestors.org. Okay, what are some of the other titles while we're at it? Um, Problems in Irish Research, the New York State Census, We also have ones that are particular to writing, so genealogical numbering, editing, indexing, immigration records, naturalization records. Good stuff. Great job, Lindsay. Thanks so much for your time and sharing with us how to apply to lineage societies. Thank you. It was great to be here. And by the way, Lindsay gives a free hour-long webinar on lineage society applications that you can see on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and search Lindsay Fulton Lineage, kind of like line age and you'll go right to it. And coming up next, she's only been researching her roots for a year or so, but when she tells you about Scottish monks helping her track down her family, you know we've got another great ordinary person making extraordinary finds. Coming up in five minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. ZapTheGrandmaGap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. Can't figure out how to get your favorite Windows genealogy software running on your MacBook? Look no further than Crossover. Crossover by Codeweavers at www.codeweavers.com allows you to run your Windows software on your Mac without the need to buy a copy of Windows. Crossover is easy to install and simple to use. Crossover supports many popular genealogy packages like Roots Magic, Legacy Family Tree, Personal Ancestral File, Family Tree Builder, and more. Crossover also lets you run other popular productivity apps like Microsoft Office and a wide range of games. So if you're looking for an easy, affordable solution to your Windows compatibility needs, Visit www.codeweavers.com today to download your free trial of Crossover. 
And don't forget to use the deal code FAMILY for an additional 40% off when you purchase Crossover. Hello, Extreme Jeans listeners. I'm Larry Gelwix, the getaway guru and host of the Travel Show radio broadcast with the hottest travel deals on the planet. And now you can travel more and pay less by joining me on our Travel Show podcast. Cruises, tours, resort hotels, airline tickets, stay close to home or travel the world. I'll show you how to travel more and pay less. Go online to columbusvacations.com. That's columbusvacations.com. Click on radio. Radio, and then click on podcast. It's really that simple. ColumbusVacations.com, radio and podcast for the hottest travel deals on the planet. Got a brick wall in your family tree? Don't know how to break through it? Get professional help from Heritage Consulting Genealogy Research Services. Speak directly with an experienced genealogical researcher, not a salesperson. By calling toll-free 1-877-537-2000. When you call, ask how you can win a free one-hour consultation with an expert genealogist. Heritage Consulting Genealogy Research Services. With over 35 years of research experience, visit HeritageConsulting.com. Did you know your family's memories are being destroyed a little at a time every day. It's true. Old home movies, slides, photos, and audio recordings fade over time. The longer you delay the digitizing of these priceless artifacts, the more likely it is they'll be gone one day. That's why you need to call the Multimedia Center. I brought in VHS videotape and had them transferred to DVD. The Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to transferduplication.com. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. And welcome back to Extreme Genes Family History Radio, America's Family History Show. I am Fisher, your radio root sleuth. And on the line with me right now is Isabella Preet. She is a, a good friend of mine with a very funny accent. Where are you from exactly, Isabella? Well, my parents are from Scotland, but I was born in Canada. Okay, so you got kind of the, the Canadian Scottish thing going at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what they say. <laughs> and you've only been uh, doing family history research for what a year or so? Well, actually, now February it will be two. Two. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you've had some amazing experiences. And I think this is always kind of fun because I love to talk to people who are just getting going in it. Because when you first start, you have experiences that you never, ever envisioned would happen. And you're certainly no exception to that rule. Yeah. The funnest thing that I found so far, I would have to say, is finding ancestors everywhere. Finding great uncles in Scotland who I've become pen pals with. and Oh, they're still around. They're still around, yeah. Writing and getting pictures and stories of ancestors that he remembers. And again, he's 90. And so uh, lots of good stories from him of people that were both related to, photos that he's able to send in the mail. Um, Did he even I, know you existed? No. <laughs> no, and it was quite funny. Because Did you know he existed? Well, yes, through Family Search. Okay, so you found it out online, but you didn't know. It wasn't within your family that, oh, you got some folks over there, and here's who you can get in touch with, and you didn't have addresses and phone numbers and names. Right, absolutely. So you had so, to discover a living guy first. Yes, well, I had an uncle that I knew of in Scotland who was a monk. And I wanted to get a hold of him, and so I called the monastery where he was, and he had passed. I was able to email to a, another monk there, 
and I was so sad that I had missed him. And then they emailed back and said, but he does have a brother who is living, and this is his address. Wow. And so you were able to get in touch with him, and, and what was his response to all your questions? Well, when I first wrote him, this is how kind of funny, you know, how funny people are sometimes. He has a couple younger nieces that he's very close to who are, of course, my age, a little bit older. And so they pulled up on MapQuest my address to make sure that I was who I said I was and where I lived was where I, where I lived. <laughs> so she's looking at your house on Google Street level, yeah. Uh-huh, from someplace in Scotland. And so I got a letter, and he had to apologize for doing that and saying that he was awfully sorry. He just wasn't sure what to think of the letter out of nowhere. So, But since then, we've written several times, and I actually met him and his nieces, and we had a little mini family reunion last summer when I was able to meet him for real. So you went to Scotland. Had you been there before in your life? Uh, yes, I had gone with my mom and dad when I was 17. So this was the second trip? Yeah, but this was a whole lot different than being 17, going <laughs> to meet people that you've met through searching out ancestors. Yeah. Very, very cool. Now, where did they take you when you went back to Scotland? Well, we went back. Uh, we met at a very nice restaurant, just spent the afternoon eating and, you know, drinking and getting to know them. Um, but other family that I had come to know, again, through, you know, doing family research, family search, we had also hooked up with and had another, you know, mini fa family reunion. And they took us to Stirling Castle and to the William Wallace Monument and to different kind of sightseeing places for a couple of days. It was very, very cool. Do you find you learn a lot more about just your Scottish heritage as a whole through your ancestors? Absolutely. And it's people that knew, you know, people like my, my great uncle Peter knew my grandfather. My grandfather had actually moved out of the picture when he was very young. And so I didn't have any information really on him, on what he was like, on his strengths, on kind of funny stories. So it was fun to talk to somebody that knew somebody that was related, connected to me. And you didn't really know. Nothing. And you said, nothing. you said you didn't have any funny stories. What funny story did you get? Oh, well, um, I thought my, my grandfather apparently was a, was a boxer, boxed a lot. And I asked my great uncle Peter, and he's just a little fellow. He was five, six, maybe, <laughs> and very, you know, slight built, but very quick on his step, especially for a 90 year old fellow. And I asked him, I said, Uncle Peter, I said, did you box as well? And he said, does my face look that bad, lass? <laughs> Which, of course, it didn't, and I was kind of horrified. I just assumed that, that they all boxed. But nope, not all of them. A lot like, of great I'm characters afraid. across the pond. <laughs> 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 it was quite. It was quite fun. You know those those uh, first genealogical trips. I mean, just reveal experiences that you never forget. And you went on to other countries too, as I recall, right? Yes. Uh -huh. My husband is Italian, and so we went over and checked out the village where his great grandparents met. And uh, it was a little town called, um, hang on, it's going to come back to me, Scott. Let me bounce back to it. But mm. we re rented a car, and away we went. And, of course, we don't speak Italian, coming from Canada. We had our youngest son, who at the time would have been 22 with us, and he spoke a little bit of broken Spanish, Trevino. So we went off to Trevino, and, you know, we got into the little town, the little village, and it was sitting high up on a hill, and it hadn't changed, I would say, in hundreds of years. The streets were very narrow, cobblestone, rocks, street. You could only drive a single car down. If you opened your car door while you were driving, you'd hit houses, little houses. Oh, they boy. Were just cobblestone next to each other. But through that, we were able to go into the only thing that was open in, in the morning when we arrived was at 10 a.m., a little pub. And so we were in there and we were trying to draw pictures that we were trying to find the cemetery to go find some of his ancestors, you know, see what we could find. And we were trying to draw pictures and, of course, nobody could understand. And they were speaking Italian and we were trying to speak our English, little bits and pieces <laughs> of words. And our son, Michael, started to speak quite broken Spanish, but it was enough alike that they got the gist. But when we pulled out our driver's license and they saw our last name, we had then gone from strange foreigners to family. Really? They, rec they recognized the last name. 
And they went and they got a fellow from next door. His name was Louis. Big, big fella. Young kid, just built like a boxer, comes downstairs. And he was actually came downstairs in, in his boxing shorts. Well, and, you got a lot of boxers in your family. Yeah, or boxer shorts. <laughs> take your pick. But he came down because it was morning, kind of half there, and saw our last name and said, one moment, went back in and changed and came back out and ushered us into his car. And he spent the day taking us to the cemetery, uh, to the city hall, where they were able to pull out a great big book that was probably 36 inches by 24 inches, very old, yellowed pages. And the woman methodically turned the pages, turned the pages, and she was able to find David's great-grandparage marriage record. Right there. she read it to us. So that was very, very cool. We went from there to the little church that they were that they were married in. It was a little rock church, and Louis had arranged some people to open it up, and it was just kind of tucked in the hills of Italy in this little town, this sleepy little town. And we went and sat in the church where they were married, and then we went and had dinner at a distant relative um, who turned out to be their great-grandfathers, both of them, David's and Maria's, were brothers. So it was such a small world and such a unique experience to go and to walk where ancestors had been and to brush shoulders, you know, with people that were linked to you. That's unbelievable. That, mm-hmm. So your first two years, that's a pretty good highlight, I'm thinking. Are you going to go back? To Scotland? Yes, we are. Italy as well, absolutely. Um, we were hoping to get back this summer, but we'll not be able to, but we'll definitely plan to get back next summer, yes, for sure. And since then, I've kept in very, very close contact with my first cousin, who we met through doing this. I mean, I knew I had a first cousin, but had never ever spoken to her, never ever written to her. And I started, you know, kind of dropping lines, dropping letters and stuff to people that I knew were there, and the outstretch of warmth has been brilliant. And it's funny with families because they recognize each other. You know what I mean? That's right. recognize each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they embrace you right out the gate. How's it changed your life, all this? It has made me really appreciate, I don't know, just the smaller things, really, what really matters. You know, people matter. Things not, not as much. Stories matter. Things you can share with your children. Things that others have learned um, that they share with you that can make a difference, and just, I guess, experiences, people, people matter. Thanks for sharing, Isabella. You're welcome. Monks and boxers. (laughs) This is why you get started. And, of course, all of our guests receive a free subscription to MyHeritage.com with the best matching technology in the industry. That's MyHeritage.com. And coming up next, Tom Perry, Captain Preservation, in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Hi, Genies, it's Fisher, and I've been telling you about MyHeritage.com's amazing new technology that searches your family tree day and night for you, finding matches even while you sleep in documents and other people's trees. Here's a find I never would have made without it. It's a newspaper story about a relative of mine, Paul Sagal, who I knew many years ago. It's from 1943, when Paul was serving in the Pacific. When he learned his father died, he wrote a poem to his brother that indicated he wouldn't be returning for the funeral. He wrote, There'll be no furlough for me. I'm in the Marines, you see, alive and well as I am. Memories I'll keep of my dad. Then the newspaper editor added, These are all the sentiments that will win this war. There are treasures like this one waiting for you now. Put MyHeritage.com's superb technology to work for you with a 20% discount. Just enter the one-word promo code ExtremeGenes. MyHeritage.com is the next big thing. While we all love diving into the deep end of our gene pool, don't forget about capturing the histories of those who are still with us. Go to StoryWorth.com to start your family's story today. Each week, StoryWorth.com will email a question to people whose stories you wish to preserve. Questions like, tell us about the day you got engaged, or what do you remember about your grandmother? All they have to do is reply with a story, either by email or by telephone. That story is then forwarded to the family and securely stored in a private online storybook. It doesn't get any simpler. You can enroll up to six storytellers for, get this, just $49 a year. 
you'll get a free one-month trial. And for a limited time, Extreme Jeans listeners get an additional 10% discount at StoryWorth.com slash Extreme Jeans. That's StoryWorth.com slash Extreme Jeans. Is your family story worth 13 cents a day? Sign up now at StoryWorth.com slash Extreme Jeans. Simple, secure, effective. Your story is worth telling. Your priceless 8mm home movies and your precious family videos are deteriorating right now. Heat, moisture, insects, dust, mold, time, they're all robbing you of your family's memories. It's time to preserve those treasures right now by digitizing them at TMCPlace.com. They've been preserving memories for over 40 years. Home movies, videos, audio tapes, vinyl records, photos, slides, and even scrapbooks. Whether your treasures are enduring the humidity of Massachusetts or the heat of Arizona, TMCPlace.com can digitize your audio and images without harming the originals and returning them to you with free shipping both ways on most orders. TMCPlace.com can even let you track your package in real time with a special GPS tracking device. Trustworthy, experienced, affordable. Call TMCPlace.com toll-free at 1-866-483-1717 to talk to Extreme Genes Preservation Authority Tom Perry about your project or order online at shop.tmcplace.com. And welcome back to Extreme Genes Family History Radio, ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here with our Preservation Authority. I call him Captain Preservation. He is Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com. Tom, i got to tell you, uh, at, at Roots Tech, I mean, the, the fans that swarmed around you, autographs, photographs, I, it was really, it was very Hollywood. I was very impressed. No comment. <laughs> anyway, let us talk about uh, this letter we got from Jim Stackhouse in Dotham, Alabama. He's asking, Tom, I've got these discs that I've created with all kinds of family information on them. I don't want to go through the problems of copywriting them and certainly realize that I can't protect myself from having people copy the discs. Is there some technical way to make sure that people can still get the information and yet not copy it? Yes and no. The yes part of it, there's been things around for years. Back in the old days, they had VHS tapes, they had cartoons. It's called macrovision. So if you put a tape in a tape player and you tried recording it to another tape player or today to a DVD player, it would, through the audio channels, it'd mess things up and the picture would look really, really bad. They'd use what's called macrovision. Then people would come out with technology. A little box you put between the two VCRs would basically erase macrovision. There are certain things you can put on the DVDs that when another player plays it, it won't understand the information. They actually purposely put bad sectors into the disc. So a normal DVD will read through it without any problem. But when you make a copy of that, that bad sector kind of grows, so to speak, and there's so much of a disturbance that it won't play. And most of these things are very expensive, and usually in order to do these on discs, you have to do what we call replicating the disc. It's not like duplicating where you can make one at a time or a hundred. When we replicate, we actually make a glass master. It's almost like, say, a cookie cutter. Like a stamp? Exactly. That's exactly what they call them. They call them stampers. And they physically stamp out the disc. So every single one is exactly the same. There's no difference in them. And they can put this kind of thing that's like macrovision in there that will keep it from being copied. However, I need to put an asterisk on the end of that because what happens is every time somebody comes out with some kind of a technology to keep you from copying stuff, somebody is going to come out and do something that will make it easy for you to get in and copy it. And the people have this goal, oh, I want to break into the Pentagon. They're not interested in anything in the Pentagon. They want to just see if they can do it. Sure. So same thing with breaking copyright codes, doing things like this. So if you don't want to do at least a 1,000, it's really not worth it to do it. You can still do it, but it's expensive. Somebody's going to find a way around it. When they first came out with DVDs, they have so many different regions of DVDs and PAL and NTSC and all these kind of things to keep people from supposedly getting a tape or a DVD from Europe and playing it in the U.S. and breaking copyright laws. However, you can go and online and you can buy DVD players that will play any region. You can buy a computer and it gives you like 15 times to change the region. And so you can watch it anyway. Boy, oh boy, my head is spinning with all this, Tom. I mean, let's take a break and we'll come back in three minutes and see where this goes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Looking for
for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Masters' option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. When was the last time you heard your grandmother's voice or saw your family enjoying life back in the 1950s or 60s? If the reason is you haven't known what to do with your old recordings, videos, and films, here's your answer. The Multimedia Center in Salt Lake City. We brought in a video project to the Multimedia Center, and overnight, they duplicated it to DVD so we could meet our deadline. The Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to Transfer Duplication. Com. Hello, Extreme Jeans listeners. I'm Larry Gelwix, the getaway guru and host of the Travel Show radio broadcast with the hottest travel deals on the planet. And now you can travel more and pay less by joining me on our Travel Show podcast. Cruises, tours, resort hotels, airline tickets, stay close to home or travel the world. I'll show you how to travel more and pay less. Go online to columbusvacations.com. That's columbusvacations.com. Click on radio. Video, and then click on podcast. It's really that simple. ColumbusVacations.com, radio and podcast for the hottest travel deals on the planet. Can't figure out how to get your favorite Windows genealogy software running on your MacBook? Look no further than Crossover. Crossover by Codeweavers at www.codeweavers.com allows you to run your Windows software on your Mac without the need to buy a copy of Windows. Crossover is easy to install and simple to use. Crossover supports many popular genealogy packages like Roots Magic, Legacy Family Tree, Personal Ancestral File, Family Tree Builder, and more. Crossover also lets you run other popular productivity apps like Microsoft Office and a wide range of games. So if you're looking for an easy, affordable solution to your Windows compatibility needs, Visit www.codeweavers.com today to download your free trial of Crossover. And don't forget to use the deal code FAMILY for an additional 40% off when you purchase Crossover. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. ZapTheGrandmaGap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. We are back. Final segment of Extreme Genes Family History Radio, America's Family History Show for this week. I am Fisher, the Radio Root Sleuth with Tom Perry. He is our preservation authority. And, and Tom, I, I've taken a couple of aspirin. I'm feeling a little bit better already. But you're not leaving us with a lot of hope about this. And we'll go through the question one more time if you're just joining us. We've been asked by a gentleman in Alabama if he can somehow protect his data that is digitally created so that people can't copy it because he feels copyright doesn't protect it, but he wants to make sure that it can't be copied. And it sounds like really there's not an easy way around this. There really isn't. That's kind of a a sad thing that we live in a society 
where people like plagiarism like to take stuff and they think, oh, it's no big deal if I make a copy. You got to realize that this is these people's livelihood. And even if it isn't their livelihood, it's still their right. It's their property. It's their stuff. You shouldn't be walking through your neighbor's yard cutting up their tulips. And there are a lot of options out there that are constantly changing. One of the best examples is Disney. Disney has millions and millions of dollars that they spend each year trying to come up with new copyright algorithms to protect their discs. And every time they come out with something new, usually within three to six months, somebody's selling something on the Internet that will break the code. It's just like in the old days when wedding videographers took your photos or took videos, and then they, they wouldn't let you make copies. They had right, to make copies. Right, right, right. They want to make a few extra bucks on it. And I come from that genre, but I never had that attitude because my feeling is I would rather have these people be really, really happy and recommend me to somebody else than think that I'm going to make an extra $20 by making their DVDs for them. So it's kind of a give and take thing. In my opinion, when I do stuff, I don't copyright it because if you do copyright it, you have to tell people how you made it. It's easier for them to figure out what you did and duplicate it themselves. If they take your music, if they take your video and use it, you always have the courts if you want to go after it. But the drama and the time you spend trying to copyright a disc usually isn't worth it. If you're posting stuff on YouTube or even if you're just posting photographs, you can always put a watermark on them like they allow you to Mm. in Photoshop. Yes. But again, the problem with that is then you're not really getting a nice, beautiful image. You've got this watermark across it. So it comes down to, you know, if that's your living, that's what you need to do, then do it. Just like you can go onto the internet and type in any genre of music or even go to iTunes and you can listen to the first usually 30 seconds for free. And then if you want to buy it, then you can buy the whole thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that there's so much drama in this kind of stuff. In my opinion, I wouldn't go to the hassle of trying to copyright my disc, copyright my tapes. Even at the Roots Tech a few weeks ago, we had people come into the booth with the same thing. Hey, I put all this family stuff together. None of my family will help me invest in this, will help me pay for anything. How can I protect it so I can legitimately get some of my money back for what I spent from my cousins and aunts and uncles stealing what I've worked on? And there's no real way to do it. Just kind of do your best and hope they go in with you. And if they don't, hey, you haven't lost anything. You still have what you originally created. So look at the pros and cons. What's it worth? Is the drama worth it? Or do I want to just do this? And if my family's going to cheat me out of some money, well, so goes the way. You know, it, it's really the question of whether it's going to become some kind of big business or not, right? I oh, mean, exactly. And, and most family history stuff is pretty small stuff because we work within a circle of people. I mean, even if you had hundreds of cousins or thousands, it's not going to amount to a whole lot. So I can see where you're coming from. Oh, exactly. You know, you have to be smart about it. As you say, you know, talk to your family. If they won't go in on it, just do it for yourself. Be happy with what you're doing. And if other people get joy out of it, instead of taking the lemon side of it, make the lemonade and say, hey, you know, that's great. I made this thing. It's all over the place now. If you're going to get the money, maybe you need to get it up front. Exactly. So look what you started, Jim. Thanks for the question. And of course, if you have a question for Tom Perry, you can ask Tom at tmcplace.com. Good to see you, Tom. Thanks. Great to be here again. And thanks for joining us. Thanks once again to Lindsay Fuller from the New England Historic Genealogical Society for talking to us about how to join those lineage societies and to Isabella Preet, who has just gotten started on her research and has had some amazing stories happen to her. We'll see you again next week. Thanks for joining us. And remember, as far as everyone knows, we're a nice, normal family. Family.